Hello and welcome guys. So in the last video we have completed our data preprocessing part. So let's go to our notebook. So this is our notebook. As we discussed in the last video that we are going to use VS Code for this. Okay, so this is my TensorFlow environment and uh, this is what we have done in the last video. Okay, so in this video we are going to see that how we can do a model selection based on our use case. So first we will go to the Keras documentation and we will see all pre-trained model present in the Keras and also we will discuss in detail about how to do a model selection based on our use case. So first I will go to Keras.io here and uh, in this API docs you can go to this uh, Keras application. So here you will find this available models. So these are some pre-trained Keras model which is available. So like exception VGG16, VGG19, ResNet50 these are some models okay if you see here so like lots of models are there here okay and also they have mentioned the size of the model in mb and uh, what is the accuracy of the model and uh, the parameters like here, here this exception contains so this exception has 22.9 m of parameters and uh, depth is 81 and uh, this much is the per inference step time taken by this model like it will take 109.4 millisecond per steps so per steps is basically that uh, iteration like at the time of training the iteration taken by the model so for each step it will take 109.4 millisecond okay and if we use gpu then it will use 8.1 millisecond okay so this is the details of exception and uh, same for vg16 v19 resnet 50 resnet 50 v2 and so on okay okay so now the question is which model we have to select out of this okay so first thing that uh, we have to look to our data set and the use case which we are solving here so we are trying to build a classifier uh, which can identify these four categories correct so like we don't have very large number of categories like 100 uh, classes or 200 classes or 300 classes we have only four classes okay so our classes our labels are very less we are only solving four class problem so why to use very powerful model okay if you take very powerful model then unnecessarily you will waste lots of time in training and uh, also the resources okay so for four class problem you can take this mobile net model also and it's a smaller model present in this entire uh, uh, table if you see this table so this is the model mobile net model having uh, uh, 16 mb of size and this mobile net v2 is 14 mb model okay and all other models are bigger models or you can do experiment on by using other models and you will see that you will not get very much performance increase okay so you can use this mobile net model because here you're uh, you are solving only four class problem okay first point and second thing is that we have if you go to our data set so we have 76515 files in training set and in validation set we have 21861 files okay so by seeing this number it's clear that we have very good amount of training set okay so if we have very good amount of training set then why to do a transfer learning by training only the last layer we will train this entire model from scratch because we have very good amount of data okay so uh, if you are new to this transfer learning and all then uh, in simple word i will tell you what is transfer learning but before that we have to i have to show you the mobile net architecture so let's search here mobile net keras architecture okay so you can go here and see the image of this okay so something like this is the mobile net architecture okay so these are some bunch of convolution layer followed by this uh, global average pooling these things are present here okay and after that we have this fully connected layer and then output layer okay so this is the uh, this is the high level of overview of what is uh, mobile net architecture okay so if you use transfer learning so what is transfer learning so if you apply transfer learning on this then you will freeze the weight of this layers because these layers are also having some parameters 
and uh, you will freeze all the weights of this and you will only train this output layer you will only train the last layer that is your softmax function layer in which you uh, put your number of uh, neurons equal to number of classes and activation function as softmax so you will only train that last layer or and you can also add some dense layer also followed by that mobile architecture so you will only train that dense layer and uh, that uh, relu dense layer and the softmax layer only the last two three layers you will train and you will put this all other uh, this uh, uh, mobile net architecture layer as it is okay you will not touch this you will add some additional layer and you will train only that layer in transfer learning okay so that is uh, the whole idea of transfer learning so the question is when to use transfer learning so if you have very less training examples like if you have only uh, 100 files or 200 files in training set then you can use transfer learning because you don't have that much of data to uh, train this bigger this big architecture okay so you can only train the last layer but if you have good amount of data set if you have good amount of training set like in our use case we have 76,515 files in training set so we have very good number of training set okay so if you have very good amount of training set then you can train this entire layer from scratch okay you don't have to fix this weights you can train this entire model so why I am doing this because uh, if you use transfer learning then these models these layers are trained on some general images like some google images of cat dog car something like general things it is trained on some general things okay but here we are uh, we are trying to build a classifier which can understand these things these images okay these are not general images these are scientific images okay these are the images taken by the patient okay so if you if we apply transfer learning on this then definitely it will uh, our model accuracy will drop and it will not it is not as much efficient to understand the entire thing so transfer learning is good when we have very less training data then we don't have any option so we have to go with the transfer learning and train the last two three layers but if we have good amount of training examples then why to use transfer learning you can train this entire model from scratch okay so this thing also you can do on this mobile net v2 architecture because model size is small so you can easily train this big entire model from scratch okay you can train all the layers but if you use other models like ResNet or inception resnet v2 these models so if you see the size this size is very uh, like it's a very bigger model so you you, you require lots of uh, compute resources also so you definitely require the gpu and uh, if you are beginner and if you are student so uh, definitely you don't uh, ev not everyone have a good amount of resources so you can't like you can't uh, train this bigger models okay because you require good gpu okay so here and also second thing is that we are only dealing with four class problem we are not solving 100 class 200 class problem so why to use very bigger model and powerful model so that's why we are using this mobile net architecture and we'll use this architecture and uh, we will train this this architecture from scratch we will not do transfer learning by training only the last two three layers we will train this entire layer why because we have good amount of training set okay so we will we'll use this uh, mobile net v2 architecture but if i go inside this mobile net v2 architecture then you will see something some other variation of v2 also like here we have mobile net v2 and if you go down then you will get mobile net v3 small function also and if you go inside this then you will see that in this mobile net also they they added some more variation of mobile net like mobile net v3 large also they have added so we are going to use this uh, if i go here so we are going to use this mobile net v3 large architecture so it is uh, like it is better than v2 and it is also better than uh, this uh, v3 small so that's why i am using this uh, mobile net v3 large architecture okay 
so this is the latest uh, model which keras has introduced so we'll use this so if you so if you want to use this model then you have to just copy this thing so it's a function of this uh, keras dot application so from keras dot application you have to import this mobile net v3 large and you have to give here input shape so we'll, we'll use this and uh, if you want to do a transfer learning also then you can go here and see like from here you will see that uh, how to do a transfer learning on this mobile net v3 large okay so what is transfer learning so here you, you will get the details of that so transfer learning consists of taking features learned on one problem and leveraging them on a new similar problem like how to do the transfer learning so first take layers from previously trained model freeze them so as to avoid destroying any of the information they contain during future training rounds add some new trainable layers on the top of frozen layers they will learn to turn the old feature into prediction on a new data set train the new layer on your data set okay so that is what we discussed that we have to add some additional layer and we will freeze the pre-trained model layers and we will only train the additional layer which we have added on our data set okay that is how we do the transfer learning and uh, so i will show you so here if you go typical transfer learning workflow so here we will uh, the typical transfer learning workflow so in this instantiate a base model and load pre-trained weights into it freeze all layers in the base model by setting trainable is equal to false create a new model on the top of the output of one layers from the base model train your new model on your new data set so that is what the flow of this uh, transfer learning so here if you go to this example so they are loading this base model so they are using exception model so by using this you can load the weight of this uh, exception model by giving here weight is equal to image net so load weight of uh, pre-trained on image net and uh, this is the shape 150 cross 150 cross 3 and uh, these are some details of uh, the exception model so what they are doing they are instantiating this base model and then they are freezing the base model by doing this base model dot trainable is equal to false means that they are freezing the weight they are saying that not to train the not to update the weight of whatever uh, is the weight of this uh, base model and then they are creating a new model by using this base model so they are defining this input layer and then they are also defining this base model by saying training is equal to false and then they are appending one global average pooling layer after this base model and then they are adding one, one dense layer and then they are building this new model okay and then they are compiling and uh, training this model so once they are doing the training so they they will only update the parameters of this dense layer okay so they will not touch this base model parameters okay that is how you can perform a transfer learning so we will understand these things in detail once we do the code once we build the architecture then i will show you how you can do a transfer learning and how you can train this entire model from scratch okay so this is the whole idea of uh, transfer learning so if you go to the keras.io then you will get everything in detail okay okay so i hope you understand why we are using mobile net v3 large model because it is better than mobile net v2 okay and it is the latest and uh, more powerful model in mobile net categories and second thing is why we are using mobile net model out of uh, other available model present in the keras like these models exception vg16 v19 resnet first thing why we are using mobile net out of this available model because we are solving four class problem so we have less categories we don't have 100 plus categories okay and second thing is that we can easily train this entire model from scratch uh, you can also train this model using CPU because the inference time per steps is uh, just uh, uh, if I use mobile net v2 also 25.9 millisecond okay so if you, if I use mobile net v3 also so around 30 millisecond per step it will take using CPU okay so we have very good amount of training set so we are planning to train this entire model from scratch we are not going to do a transfer learning so that's also a one of the motivation of using this mobile net v2 model okay 
if I use any other model, then uh, it will take lots of time to train this entire model from scratch because uh, the training time per steps is very high as compared to MobileNet V2. And also, if you use any powerful model, then you will not get very good performance increase because you have very less number of categories here. Okay. You can also try with like some slight bigger model than this mobile net V2. Like you can try with uh, this uh, dense net also. Like if you have good compute resources, like if you have good GPU, then you can try with and dense net also. Like whatever uh, accuracy and uh, training accuracy and validation accuracy I will get at the last. You can compare and you can experiment with some other models also and see and if you if you get some good result then you can post in the comment box okay so that's the whole idea so that's all for this video in next video we'll use mobile net v3 large model and we will build our uh, model architecture okay so thank you guys thanks a lot for watching this video